Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about the Romanov family. The Romanov family consisted of Nicholas II and his wife Alexandra and their five children, four daughters and one son. Tsar Nicholas II was the last Tsar of Russia. He was born on the 18th of May 1868 and was the eldest son of Tsar Alexander III. Nicholas's father died in 1894 and Nicholas then became the Emperor of Russia. In the same year, Nicholas married Princess Alexandra. Nicholas did struggle ruling his vast Russian Empire. He was partly responsible for war with Japan in 1904, as he was determined to expand his empire in Asia. But Russia lost and Nicholas was forced into peace negotiations. Nicholas was not very popular with his people. The lower class workers in Russia lived in poverty and worked in dangerous conditions. In 1905, thousands of workers marched to the Tsar's palace. They believed Nicholas wanted to help them, but they were blocked from the palace and Nicholas's soldiers fired into the crowd, killing many of the marchers. This day is now known as Bloody Sunday. The people no longer trusted the Tsar. After this, a revolution started as people revolted against the Tsar's government and Nicholas was then forced to create a house of representatives called the Duma. But Nicholas still did not allow the Duma to have much power. With the start of World War I in 1914, Russia was at war against the Central Powers and the Russian army lost against Germany at the Battle of Tannenberg. In 1917, the Russian people had had enough, and we see the start of the Russian Revolution. The Duma, supported by the army, forced Nicholas to step down and abdicate the throne. Although Nicholas II is viewed as a rather poor leader, he was a family man, a great father who cared a lot for his family. Alexandra Fyodorovna, was the wife of Nicholas II. She was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria and the daughter of Queen Victoria's second daughter, Princess Alice. She was apparently Victoria's favorite granddaughter. Like her husband, Alexandra believed God gave monarchs absolute power and the right to rule, and her beliefs didn't make her a very popular ruler. Nicholas was completely devoted to Alexandra. She had great influence over him and encouraged Nicholas in a lot of his decision making. Now I'm going to talk briefly about Nicholas's and Alexandra's children. Olga was the oldest of Nicholas and Alexandra's children. She had chestnut blonde hair, bright blue eyes, a broad face and an upturned nose. It was said she was a caring and generous child, but was also famous for her quick temper, moodiness and straightforward personality. It is said that when she grew impatient of waiting for her portrait to be painted, she told the painter, You are a very ugly man and I don't like you one bit. She was also very intelligent and enjoyed studying. She, like her sisters, had a very sheltered life and were mostly hidden from the public eye. Olga had a very close relationship with her father and her brother, but wasn't as close with her mother, although she still loved her very much. Several prospects were considered for her marriage, but she was never satisfied with any of them and her parents supported her. Tatiana was the second eldest child. She's described of having dark auburn hair, a rather pale complexion, wide apart light brown eyes and fine features. She was tall, slender and elegant and was considered the prettiest of the sisters. She was seen as the leader of the siblings due to her organisation skills and brisk attitude. It is said she had a nurturing nature and liked to look after her siblings. She was hard working and was the most reserved of the four sisters. Tatiana was closer to her mother than any of her sisters and many considered her to be Alexandra's favourite daughter. She was also very close to her father. There is a story that while she was working as a nurse during World War I, she met a wounded soldier and the two fell in love. He was then allowed to work at the palace. Maria was the third eldest child. She had light brown hair and her large bright blue eyes were complimented a lot. She was called a classic beauty. Maria wasn't interested in schoolwork and was described as lazy, but she was very known for her good nature. She had a sweet, kind and warm personality. She was calmer and quieter than her family members and seen as the most innocent of the sisters. Maria sometimes felt left out around her sisters, but she was very close to her father. Anastasia was the youngest daughter and the fourth eldest child. She is perhaps the most well-known of the Romanov children. When she was born, her parents were disappointed she was a girl, 
as they were now desperate for a male heir. She was described as short and a little chubby, with blue eyes and blonde hair. It is said she was the most lively and argumentative of the children. She was very energetic and mischievous. She was described as gifted and bright, but was never really interested in schoolwork. Alexei was the youngest of the children, and Nicholas and Alexandra's only son. He was the heir to the Russian Empire, and his birth was celebrated by many. He was described as a handsome boy, tall for his age, with a long, finely chiselled face, delicate features, auburn hair, and large dark blue eyes. Alexei was a very spoiled child. His parents indulged his tantrums and mischievous behaviour, rarely punishing him. It is said he was disobedient, difficult to control, and liked playing pranks on people. But as he grew older, he became more thoughtful and considerate. Alexei was very close to his sisters. He was the centre of his family. His sisters worshipped him, and he was his parents' pride and joy. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Grigory Rasputin who basically became a member of the Romanovs' family. He was a big part of their lives. Alexei had a serious case of haemophilia, that is a condition that affects the blood's ability to clot, which means you bleed for longer than usual. The condition is usually inherited and ran through Alexei's mother's family. Alexei had frequent and intense episodes of bleeding with just the minor of injuries which meant he had to be watched closely at all times. In 1906, a man called Grigory Rasputin began acting as a healer for Alexei. He prayed over the boy when he was close to death, and he then quickly recovered. Alexandra then believed he was the only person who could help her son. Rasputin later became a divisive figure in court and was given a high point of power by Nicholas, but he was not liked by others and was seen as a religious charlatan. In 1916, Rasputin was assassinated by a group of conservative noblemen who opposed his influence over Alexandra and Nicholas. After Nicholas had abdicated the throne, a group of communists called Bolsheviks took over the government and Nicholas and his family were taken as prisoners. According to one account, on the 17th of July 1918, the family were awakened, told to get dressed and then led down into a basement room. They were told they had to be moved for family safety, but a firing squad were waiting in the adjoining room. They were then told they were to be executed, and before much could be said, the executioners drew handguns and began shooting. Even more tragically, not all of the family died instantly. Because of the jewels the children had under their clothing, it took a lot of bullets and bayonets to kill them. There was a myth that Anastasia survived the execution, with many women claiming to be her but Anastasia's remains have since been found. Olga was 22 when she was murdered. Tatiana was 21. Maria was 19. Anastasia was 17. And Alexei was 13.